Hello again and welcome back to a busy instalment of the ABC of EV and today we're looking at wall chargers, the units that you see on the side of people's houses and offices in our introductory series demystifying the world of electric vehicles. My name is Martin Lee and if you like what we do here make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss a show. So what's a wall charger? So what do we mean by wall charger? Let's take a step back and make sure that we're all on the same page, okay? We're gonna be talking about the smaller units that people mount on the side of their house, their garage, for slower home charging. You'll also see them installed in commercial premises like hotels and some car parks. Generally, they're smaller, they have AC power, and normally between seven and 11 kilowatts. Can be slower, can be faster. Let's talk charging speeds. We just mentioned charging speeds, but let's take a deeper look so we have a bit of context to what these units do and what the numbers mean. And if you wanna get more understanding about the difference between AC and DC, have a look at the previous video we made on that for you. So in a sense, you could call a regular domestic socket in your garage a wall charger, couldn't you? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. I personally wouldn't. I'm thinking of those permanent installations that a qualified electrician has put in. Now on a home socket, if you're just plugging it into anything else that your appliances would plug into, and I don't recommend that, but I know some people do, you could charge your car, depending on what country you live in and your electricity supply, maybe at two kilowatts an hour. It would take over 30 hours to fill the Hyundai Kona. In essence, you're putting in about 10 or 15 kilometers of range every hour. It's slow and it's not efficient either. But we're not gonna focus on domestic sockets. The next step up is what we would call a typical wall charger or wall box, otherwise known as EVSE, if you see that phrase used. These units are physically bigger than a domestic socket, but more powerful. Some units can be really compact these days, maybe the size of a small pot or a takeaway carton full of fried rice. Otherwise, you'll see them slightly bigger in commercial settings, maybe the size of a small carry-on case that you take on a plane. Charging speeds of these type of units typically are between seven and 11 kilowatts on single phase electricity. We're talking about AC, alternating current here. So it would be possible to have a home wall charger up to 22 kilowatts AC and even beyond in some cases, but again, those are edge cases. We're not really focusing on that today without upgrading the electrics in your home, which we will touch on later. You're probably gonna have a seven kilowatt charger on a 32 amp circuit. Pretty common for many people. That's enough power to put 40 kilometers of range into your car every hour. Obviously, that's a lot slower than DC fast chargers that you see on the highway. And let's face it, if you're asleep in bed, it doesn't matter how quickly or slowly your car is charging, as long as it's full, when you get back in it. There are some limitations to bear in mind, for example, older EVs, like say the early Nissan Leafs only charged on AC at three kilowatts just over. So even if you had a faster wall box, the car couldn't take it. On the flip side of that, more modern EVs can take more than seven kilowatts. Many new EVs are coming with 11 kilowatt onboard AC charging. In the case of the trusty Renault Zoe that I drive and the upcoming Nissan Aria, you can take 22 kilowatts. But again, if you don't have that box on your wall, that's gonna be the limitation. Let's move on to the wiring and the electrics in your house. This is a complicated one that we're gonna try and make as simple as possible. Again, it's a global channel and there's so many different systems in use around the world. Countries around the world have different grades of power. In some countries that operate 120 volts, like the US, many have 240 volts where I am. And another difference between countries is power supply to the house itself. Staying with where I live, it's unheard of for houses, domestic homes to have anything other than a single phase supply, whereas in some countries, three phase is common domestically, and that supplies more power to the house. Obviously, many commercial buildings and offices have a more robust power supply and can accommodate a whole bank of charges for their customers and staff. Another thing to bear in mind is the quality of electrics within your home. Some older properties may not have the wiring capable and needs an upgrade. Have you ever had an electric shower installed and you had to have an upgrade to your wiring? It's a similar idea here. The installation of a charger may not be as simple as you think. They may have to install diverter switches to make the charger safe and avoid overloading 
your home supply. So far we've spoken mostly about domestic wall chargers, but what about commercial ones? Well, they may well be the most important as we transition to the future of EVs. Consider the amount of miles that commercial vehicles do in their lifetime. They are working vehicles. And they're always on the move, because if they're not, they're not making money. Taxis, couriers, postal vans, police cars, buses, and many other types of vehicle. At the moment, they're churning out diesel fumes every mile they drive, and they need to be converted to electric as soon as possible. But where to charge them? Well, for many commercial vehicles, they operate on a working week. So they spend evenings and overnights and weekends in a depot. Plenty of time to charge up for the next day's work. Many city delivery vans may only use 10 kilowatts of energy in a day's work, so could even be charged up in the time it takes the driver to have their lunch break. And that's good news if some of these vehicles do two or even three shifts in a day. Some of these vehicles may never stop working, even though the drivers change, and it's great that we can go electric with those cars. There's another choice to make when you think about wall chargers, and if you have one installed, you'll be asked whether you want it to be tethered or untethered. What does that mean? Well, if you picture a wall charger in your head, is there a cable coming out of it all the time, or does it have a little flap and a socket that you can plug your own cable into? Well, if it's permanently attached to a cable, it's a tethered unit. It means there's a permanent cable fixture uh, when you can plug your car in very easily. You just pull up and plug your car in, but it has a disadvantage over an untethered unit. If you go untethered, there's no cable affixed to it, but it means that if there is a cable problem in the future, you can simply change the cable easily for less expense. You can bring along your own cable and plug in the one that suits your car. If somebody else visits you with a different car, a different connection, they can just plug in and use their own cable. In fairness, most regions around the world are quite standardized and the need for sharing is getting less and less though. So we didn't want to make today about any one brand or make it feature specific, but there are some nifty charges becoming more prevalent that offer a window into the future. Some chargers are smart chargers. They're fully connected and have more functionality. There's a tariff that I'm on in the UK that moves through the day and tracks the price of electricity. Other people have a fixed window, often overnight when it's cheaper and more expensive during the day. Well, you can even program some smart chargers to only charge your car when the price of your electricity goes below a certain value. In some cases, customers are even paid to charge their car. Some wall boxes have a cool feature to use any surplus energy in your home or office and put it into the car. The charger knows how much renewable energy your solar power is producing and how much energy your house is using. And any excess, rather than going back into the grid, is diverted to your car first. In time, vehicle to grid will become more prevalent and people can charge their cars at off-peak rates, maybe use that electricity when it's more expensive or even sell back to the grid, otherwise known as your neighbor, at peak times at a higher price and yes, your car could actually make you money as it's sitting doing nothing. In summary, well that was a really packed show today, so much to fit in, and this series is always meant to be an introductory series to let you know about the various terms and phrases that you could go away and research more if you are interested. And if you want to know more details, check out the other videos that we've made on AC charging, DC charging, vehicle to grid, and different connectors as well. Now let us know what you think in the comments below. What charger do you use at home and at work? Where do you see the future of home charging? I'd love to know. Let's keep the conversation going. If you, if you like this video, by the way, give us a thumbs up. It tells us to make more videos just like it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.